Uh, hi everyone, um, Christian. Thank you very much for inviting us to to this to give this presentation in this Green Carbon webinar series. Um, my name is Sara. I work as an environmental consultant for Edafotec. Um, I'm here on behalf of Edafotec to talk about the application of biochar for soil decontamination. Firstly, I would like to introduce Edafotec briefly. Um, Edafotec is a, a small company based in Spain. We also have a subsidiary in Peru. And this subsidiary covers the, the whole um, Latin American market. And we also have uh, commercial and professional um, relationships in other countries, such as Portugal, Angola, and Mexico. Uh, Edafotec's objectives uh, their, their purpose, our purpose is to um, decontaminate soils and, and water and also restorate landscape and we do it uh, by means of uh, technologies which are based on nature, uh, for example biochar as we are talking about it today, artificial soils and bioremediation. Firstly, I would like to also to, to give um, an overview of the problematics around contaminated soils. And for this purpose, I have bring some, some data from the European Environment Agency. According to this agency, 2.5 million sites in Europe are potential contaminated. And from this, 40%, for, sorry, 14% are estimated to be contaminated. And with potential contaminated, sorry, I wanted to say that uh, this means that there is uh, an activity um, in the area which is potential pollu uh, that causes potentially causes pollution, but there are not evidence and there are not assessments uh, done uh, until now that can uh, verify this. Um, uh, from these 340,000 estimated contaminated sites, the one, uh, one third of them are, have been already identified and only um, the 15% of them has been remediated. Uh, there are several sources which cause this contamination in the soils. The main ones, which stands for the two thirds of the contam local contaminations are waste disposal and treatment and industrial and commercial activities. The rest of them are storage, storage like manual and oil storage, and uh, others in which includes agricultural activities, um, transport spills on land, military, and nuclear operations. There are also different uh, pollutants which causes the contamination, and it's very common that in a in a context in a in a contaminated soil we find not just one, if not a combination of more than one uh, combined uh, contamination, and this makes uh, remediation works uh, more complex. This chart uh, breaks down the most frequently applied remediation techniques for, for soils contaminated. And uh, to sum up, uh, traditional techniques are most frequently used than new ones, than alternative ones. Um, there is also a tendency to use ex situ uh, measures in, oppos in opposition to, to in situ ones. Um, in particular, excavation and disposal, uh, the rent, the uh, pink one, uh, is one of the most commonly one applied, and it stands for the 30% of remediation sites. Um, this uh, this is a problem uh, because this uh, sorry this is a um, a problem. Um, these are bad news, let us say, because uh, the the um, these techniques, these ex situ, and also the traditional techniques in general, they are um, they are not they have, um, they stand uh, they are sorry <laughs> I'm a bit uh, um, but okay these are um, they pose a problem for the environment and they are also very uh, they are expensive and so I think. And we believe in Edafotec that we need to, to continue to look for new, new, new alternatives that are more, more 
effective, of course, but they are also environmentally friendly and also costly, cost effective. And for this, we, we, we think in biochar as a solution. Uh, we know, as you, you, you may know, of course, that biochar is a material with a lot, um, lot of properties, very interesting for, for the soil remediation, such as high surface area, uh, with a, and with charge on it, and also it's rich, the, the surface is rich in functional groups. It also has high porosity, and it rises pH, and among other properties, and uh, this with also the, with these properties is very, um, they, this biochar material is very interesting for this, for this field, to be applied in this field. And it also, uh, it also has another advantages, such as soil remediation, so improving its um, their its um, physical, physical chemical properties, and also mitigate clim climate change. But we will we'll talk a bit about it uh, later. In biochar decontaminates uh, by different mechanisms, and this mechanism differs depends on if whether it is a heavy metal or an organic contaminant. Heavy metals absorption occurs mainly by electro electrostatic attraction, ion exchange, and precipitation. And organic contaminants are mostly um, absorbed by biochar um, via um, Van der Waals fields, uh, forces, sorry, hydrophobic interactions, and hydrogen bonds. This, and this mechanism chains um, they are not always this, they are not always used and it, this that whether ones are used or another depend on different factors for example it depends on the pyrolysis conditions in the carbonization methods and also the the materials the bi the biomass which is used to elaborate this biochar and also the effectiveness of this mechanism change um, also with different factors, um, for example, in organic contaminants, some factors, some important factors to the, to the effectiveness are um, pore size and surface area. And in heavy metals, there are the physical chemical properties of soils, such as pH range, um, moisture, clay content, and temperature. Biochar also absorbs the, well, also the contaminate soils uh, indirectly by different mechanisms. One of, one of them is by raising the pH. With this raise, most of the metals in our chains, they, are, they become insolubilized and they precipitate. Another one is that um, biochar also increments the organic matter and the organic matters has a high affinity to, to form complex with metals. And also, uh, biochar acts as a, as, a, as a support for the bacteria, and this bacteria may, uh, may have the capability of metabolize organic compounds. Now I would like to talk a bit about artificial soils because in Edafotec we use the biochar and artificial soils com combined. Uh, let's say that uh, we use artificial soils as, a, as the matrix to, of, the, of the biochar. And artificial soils are soils which are uh, made by man or largely modified by them. Um, they are made by residues um, both organic and inorganic, for example, uh, or um, manure from, from animals, uh, construction and demolition waste, and also seaweed sludge. Um, it's very interesting that artificial soils can be tailor made for specific purposes, like uh, here we have for the purpose of environmental, pro environmental purposes. Um, uh, in the photo, we design it with, uh, to have the same uh, biochemical characteristics than, than, than natural soils, so they behave and evolve as natural soils. The elaboration process of artificial soils can be divided into stages. 
Um, the first one is in the fermentation, the fermentation stage. In this uh, period, uh, takes place um, the inc an increment of temperature, and with this increment, uh, is benef is beneficial because it um, um, prevents us it um, prevents us for having a microorganism which has, might be hazardous, um, and also the, there is an organic matter degradation in presence of oxygen. This uh, state um, lasts one, one month, the same as the next uh, period, the, this, the maturation period. And in, during, this madura during the maturation, there is an stabilization of the organic matter. In both stages, it's important to have uh, to do uh, periodic flippings of the, um, of the mixture of, of of the soil which is being elaborated to get that to get uh, to to be oxygenized here you can see a pile of this mixture of residues uh, which are being uh, um, well flipping with these machines to get the 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 artificial soils done and um, artificial soils uh, has lot of benefits for soils um, for for uh, for the first one the first one is that they they are able to 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 modify underside redox conditions and generate the most suitable ones for example in in the mines uh, it's normal it's very usual usually usually there there are acid uh, conditions the they there is the um, Acid water is generated, and this because of the P, a low pH, and this can be modified. The, the pH, thanks to artificial soils, pH can be rise and stabilized. It also immobilizes contaminants as as biochar, as biochar does, uh, both organic and inorganic. It also uh, acts as a carbon sink. And not only um, artificial, artificial soils, not only remediate the contaminated soils, if not, they improve also their physical chemical properties. For example, they, they can provide a desired structure. They, all, they can also um, retain water and provide uh, nutrients in a form that they are available for the plants. Um, and also artificial soils as natural soils, they, they are an interface between the, the atmosphere, the geosphere, the, um, the biosphere and the hydrosphere. And in, and in this sense, uh, everything passes through soils. And because of that, they act as a filter and they act, uh, act as a water filter. So uh, biochar and artificial soils in combination, they enhance each other their effects. And they are both cost effective, they are environmentally friendly, they can be tailor made to, to, to be applied in a specific conditions, uh, not just of pollutants condition, different combination of pollutants, but also the type of the slopes, weather, etc. Um, they are they are durable. They improve soil properties and functions. Um, as they are um, elaborated from residues, and these residues are transformed into products, they contribute to the circular economy. And, and, and also, as these residues are no longer being sent to the landfills and um, incinerated, incinerated plants, they also reduce carbon emissions. In the end, uh, the application of these uh, two technologies um, contribute, highly contribute to the sustainable development goals because most of these goals are, have, have need to, to have healthy soils. For example, for, for as, as I was saying, for having quality water, also to have um, safe food um, and ensure healthy lives and um, promote well-being, they, they, they need to have uh, healthy soils. And also because they are, um, they are, trans they, are they use in their residues and they transform residues into products, 
uh, they also contribute to the to the waste management uh, by for example recycling the urban waste and also contribute to the goal of limiting the garbage which ends up in, 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 land, in, land, in landfills. And here uh, I would like to show you some case studies uh, in which we have worked with in Edafotech. The first one is a tailing from an extraction tunnel uh, in Spain. Um, it's, cover, it's all covered with artificial soils, in soils except in the top. In that shadow place, um, is, there is no, no remediation technique applied there. Um, the difference between, if, well, if you can see the, the red area, uh, is not completely covered by grass. And this is because the seeds were, were planted in, in a different season, a rainy season, and um, most of the seeds run away. Um, this is um, something to learn from it, um, to also uh, plant when, when is the right uh, moment to, to, to plant. And here you can also see a um, uranium mine, also in Spain, and also you can see the contrast, the contrast between the, the, the cover place, uh, the, green, the green area, which is covered by, by artificial soils, and the naked place, which was not, not remediated. And here, lastly, this is a copper mine, also in Spain. And you can see the, the, the difference between after the, before, sorry, the, the application of artificial soils and after the application. And you can see that it looks more like a, like a, natural, like a natural landscape and also it was um, it was restored. It has it, and previously it has a high, a low pH range uh, values, and and now um, it it stabilized and it has an optimum. It, it the pH is in, a, in an optimum range. Well, here is my presentation um, so far. And now, if there is any any question, I will be glad to to answer to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. Very nice presentation. Um, and there are some questions in the chat already. Yeah. Um, so Tim was asking, uh, why is this not widely commercially adapted so far? What are the barriers or what problems you uh, see in that? Okay, uh, the person means uh, the um, the question is about the biochar or about the the so artificial soils or both. I, th I think using a biochar in artificial soils. Mm, okay, um, well, um, it's something that we are working on, um, but it's it's taking us time and it's a slow and. Um, we we have now uh, run we're now running a project uh, an, a research project in which we are including this biochar into the the soil but with this i want to say that uh, this remediation uh, works are slow and it takes time because um until now up to the present uh, as i was saying uh, the most of the technologies which are being applied are are the traditional ones and i think from, well from my point of view i think um, maybe they are the people is scared to to try to use new new alternatives i think thank you um so the next question was from uh, don what concentration of biochar is recommended for blending into contaminated soil? Do you have a certain percentage of biochar you, or maximum percentage or minimum one you use for the soil remediation? Uh, well, we, we don't have an exact, an exact uh, percentage because we, as I said, uh, we, we design it specifically for its uh, contamination site. So, um, depending on the requirements of each site, we, we change. 
that percentage. And we also, uh, as we use it in combination with uh, artificial soils, um, maybe we use less percentage than if it were, if it were uh, used alone, because also artificial soils, or soils also have um, uh, also uh, the contaminate as well. They have their own functions. Um, and the next question was from Paul. Uh, is biochar usually applied in combination with plants? Um, well, I, yes. Um, well, we don't we don't use it. Pers uh, we personally, at a we don't we don't do fit remediation. But I know. Well, I have seen that yes, there are places where it was used uh, biochar in combination with fit remediation. But we 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 prefer not to use in the fetal remediation because uh, then you have the plants with the with uh, with the with the contaminants on it, and then you have a residue that you have to also uh, manage. Okay, um, so um, is biochar used for groundwater uh, treatment, uh, or do you use it in in your uh, company? Um, and for instance, for heavy metal uh, removal from ground groundwater. Sorry, the last one was? Uh, is is biochar used for groundwater treatment? For example, the uh, removal for, of heavy metals. Yeah, yeah, it can be used. It can be used. You can do um, barriers with the um, with uh, also artificial soil and um, biochar on it, and you with that the the water goes through and also it also works for for absorbing the the contaminants the for example the heavy metals which are in the water um being stuck in the in the biochar and other and other components of the artificial soil okay i would i would say we uh, have two more questions i can ask and then we go to the next speaker so the first one is would it be possible for federal and local governments to showcase this technology um, by uh, funding pilot projects that demonstrate the benefits? Um, so I think the question is more or less, uh, are you government funded and do you have something like pilot projects? So if we have? Uh, pilot projects, uh, so um, to uh, show that it's working actually. Uh, yes. Um, we have we have run one one pilot in Peru, but um, in, we don't have yet um, data about it, and we are still running it. And we have another that we are starting now uh, here in in Spain. Also, when we will combine also this biochar biochar um, and artificial soils, um, we hopefully we will have data sh important data. Uh, as soon as possible to to be able to go further and spread develop more the technology um, and uh, Cindy Martin was asking how was the biochar uh, applied in your uh, case studies um, was it mixed with the artificial soil and then just put over the top of the uh, areas to decontaminate Yes, yes, that's the the, the way uh, we we use we do we elaborate the artificial soil and then we we have the the biochar uh, on it and we we also mix it and then the artificial soil is disposed over the contaminated area and um, to take place the the contamination, but we are also. Mm, and this is why we also are still studying about it and doing pilots to 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 test if it's better to to add the biochar um, at the end once the, the the artificial soil is already made or when the soil during the soil elaboration and we are we are we are looking uh, what is best what is the best maybe. Hmm. Okay, and I have a last question. Um, how did you produce your biochar, and how do you choose how uh, what conditions you use for your soils? Do you have laboratories for that, or no? No, hopefully we don't have laboratories. Um, we 
we we outsource this we we don't do it uh, we pay to other companies to, to to them to make us for us the the biotech okay um so you have uh, two or three questions more in the chat but uh, i think we are well in time right now so uh if you uh, would be great if you can answer in the, in the chat um um, okay, okay. If not, also everybody who wants to, to have any question, they can also write me to the, my email and we will be glad to, to answer. Thank you.